morning, everybody. This is Mikael from HealthWise Enterprise. The health food store is located at 3807 East 8 Mile Road, about three blocks west of Ryan, between Ryan and DeQuinda. Uh, but some people say between Taco Bell and Long John Silver. We dare to service you from 10 to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. And you can give us a call directly at the store at 586-757-DIET. Again, that's 586-757-3438. Our old number still works, 313-366-DIET. And you can always reach me on the cell phone at 600-8532. Well, this is the uh, summertime. We got here, we got this 70, 80, 90, 100 degree weathers. Um, some of the things we uh, do to keep cool, of course, is um, vitamin C what you get from your citrus foods, or you can supplement them with it. Um, uh, the supplements we have at HealthWise, which is rich in, rich in vitamin C. Uh, I like the little packages that uh, give you a 1,000 milligrams of the uh, uh, vitamin C plus some electrolytes, uh, and, and, uh, which is some trace minerals. And sometimes we sweat, uh, you know, if we're outside being active, okay, and, and that sweat is your trace mineral. So you want to put those, at least those electrolytes, if not uh, all the trace minerals, back into your system. Um, hope everybody's um, uh, uh, <laughs> been waiting for the good weather and yes, taking advantage of it. Uh, going to, uh, you know, backyard parties and just hanging out on, on the porch and even going to the uh, park or to the beaches and doing all these activities that we do uh, in America uh, outdoors. You know, uh, America just celebrated this um, uh, Independence Day last week. And, uh, of course, we had our Juneteenth Day and back in June the 19th. And um, just keep on pushing on and um, in this uh, this country that um, I don't want to get too much into the politics. But one of the subject matters that uh, I've never talked about uh, over the years since I've been here at WHPR since, what, February of 2001. <laughs> uh, it's about, what, six months after I got married. Um it's alcohol, drinking alcohol, okay. And um, I know my, me personally, I've been exposed to it all my life, okay. And um, and my, my parents are on the mindset, if you're going to drink, you know how to drink, okay, and drink at home and uh, just, you know, know your limits. And... Um, <laughs> uh, we used to tell said folks to you know eat some fries, some potatoes to help soak up the alcohol, um, and then they talked about eating tomatoes to help uh, 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 soak up the alcohol and help neutralize some of the negativity to it, and then uh, the latest was to drink uh, water. Okay, so uh, that's one of the things that I passed down to uh, to my family is if every drink you have, whether it be beer, or, or shot, or wine, drink your glass of water. And um, uh, you know, and from this study here is some of the things we talked about is just you know basically one drink, um, and you know maybe two, you know, and going beyond that, you know, you subject to lose control and. <laughs> Uh, people lose their lives from people losing control. And um, um, I never looked at alcohol as a, a poison, but Dr. McCullough, that's exactly what he calls it, a poison. And um, it's interesting um, how, you know, you call it something that you partake to uh, relax and enjoy, and uh, he calling it uh, a poison. Uh, because of all the uh, the damages it does to uh, to the body, and uh, and even to other people, uh, this um, like I said, it's like it's number fifth leading cause of death in this country is uh, alcohol uh, consumption because uh, people don't don't control themselves. So hopefully, with the information that we share with you today. 
Uh, you can take better control. Uh, uh, if you're going to drink alcohol, um, give you some things that you can take um, to uh, prevent losing control, okay? Um, and so getting right into it is um, what happens to your body when you drink too much alcohol, uh, okay? And this, uh, this latest article came out in February, uh, April, excuse me, the 19th in this year. Uh, a quick overview of this article. Generally, women are more vulnerable to alcohol poisoning and feel the effects of alcohol faster than men of the same size. They are also more predisposed to suffer from long-term alcohol-induced damages to the body. Alcohol, the blood alcohol content, BAC, also called blood alcohol concentration, refers to the amount of alcohol in your bloodstream. It is expressed as the weight of ethyl known measured in grams in 100 milliliters of blood or 210 liters of breath. Um, blood alcohol content can be measured either through a blood analyzer test, a blood test, or a urine test. As a rule of thumb, thumb darker liquors usually have higher alcohol content, whereas sweeter verdant have less. Hence, darker and bitter beers have higher alcohol content. The same holds true for red wines compared to white wines and sweet wines, except for Chardonnay. Meanwhile, all clear liquors have 40% alcohol content except for grain alcohol. Another high point is in 2015 to 2020, the U.S. Standard Dietary Guide for Americans considering having no more than one drink per day for women and no more than two drinks per day for men as moderate drinking. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't drink uh, uh, Sunday through uh Friday, and then you uh, you <laughs> you take all of those one drinks on that one day. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean that. It's your, your your tolerance level. Your body can only handle so much alcohol. Okay, uh, I know my church triumph. We uh, go on a fast every year um, for Lent. And one of the things the church does is a lot of the members give up, besides meat, they give up alcohol, okay? And uh, some people uh, cut down, you know, and just instead of drinking all kind of alcohols, they may just drink wine or may just drink beer. Um, I find uh, just non-alcoholic beer called Heineken. Okay, this last fast that we took, and it tastes just like the regular Heineken without zero alcohol content. Okay, so there's ways to drink and be sociable uh, without consuming the alcohol, even if you just wanted to, you know, have the physical uh, uh, appearance. You know, of course, the folks that's drinking going to talk about you, but that's all the fun and hanging out with your friends anyway. Some people believe that an occasional glass of red wine can benefit your health. Regardless of the merits of this view, too much red wine is unhealthy. See, like in France, they drink a lot of red wine, and they found out they had left less, um, uh, uh, con you know, diseases. And... In, so he was looking at the uh, nourishment that's in the red wine. But then some folks got smart and took that and went to the grape. And they started having grapeseed extract. 
okay? And because he actually went from the grape to the seed itself, and they made this product called Panajata, uh, which was uh, what twenty times stronger than vitamin E, and um, I think fifty times stronger than vitamin C from the grape seed. Where they just skipped the wine and just skipped the grape one straight to the seed, and it's still out to the to this day. So. Grapes do have very beneficial, uh, high amounts of benefits for your body. It's just, um, in this article, we're talking about wine as a poison and uh, what you can do to uh, counteract that. Adults can impair decision-making abilities and motor skills. Or I should say alcohol. <laughs> can impair decision-making abilities and motor skills. It is frequently a factor in vehicle accidents, violent behavior, unplanned pregnancies, and sexual transmitted diseases. Excess alcohol, excess alcohol consumption can lead to alcohol poisoning too, which negatively impact your health and may even cost your life if not properly addressed. So the alcohol way out your liver. And your liver is key for filtering a lot of poisons. And if it's wore out, you you poisoning yourself. You had no defense mechanisms. In the United States alone, there are approximately 88,000 deaths and 2.5 million years of potential life loss reported yearly from the year 2006 to the year 2010 due to alcohol poisoning taken off an average of 30 years on the lives of those who died. You know, they got mothers against drunk drivers. It is all of these organizations to... Um, help protect the innocent because when you drink alcohol you get behind that vehicle it's like a lethal weapon it's not the time to be um to be driving i mean you can hold the windows down you can drink uh, plenty of water um eat you some food before you drink but it's a limit like i say one glass for women, two glasses for guys. What is alcohol poisoning? Alcohol and poisoning impairs the body and eventually shuts down the areas of the brain that control basic life functions like breathing, heart rate, and temperature control. You become more accessible to alcohol poisoning when you, one, Boys drink, consuming four or more alcohol beverages in a single occasion for women or more than five alcohol drinks for men. It's budging. Folks at the parties, you know, college students, high school students, you know, is, is trying, trying to be cool. You can't be cool if you're dead. Drinking heavily, consuming eight or more alcohol beverages per week for women or more than 15 alcohol beverages for men per week. Remember, it's two a day for men, one a day for women. Drinking during pregnancy. Now, no amount of alcohol is safe to drink during pregnancy due to the risk of passing alcohol toxicity through the placenta to your unborn child, which can cause severe damage at any stage of pregnancy. And folks do not want to have a one night of drinking while you're pregnant and your baby be uh, autistic your whole life or their whole life drinking under the age of 21 underage drinkers are more vulnerable to alcohol poison 
as studies have shown, they typically consume about five drinks in a season in a, a single occasion. See, alcohol has a delayed response. You drink it and you feel real good, and then you go ahead and drink it some more to feel even better. And then you just out of control. So you can learn your limits the hard way or take the advice that they talk about here. One drink for women and two drinks for men. Six symptoms of alcohol poisoning. Alcohol poisoning comes from very serious health penalties, which is why it's very important to be well informed about the symptoms. Below are some of the most common signs of alcohol poisoning. Loss of coordination. Some people think that uh, what they call that uh, uh, when the room is spinning. Um, vertical. It could also be the poisoning from consuming too much alcohol. It's then messed up your brain. Now, when people have the vertigo, we have had people to come in and take this civil water spray and spray it 10 times in their ear, let it stay there 10 minutes and flip over through the other ear, let it 10 times in that ear and let it stay there 10 minutes. And everything lined back up. We've also had people that were suffering from this condition of alcohol poison and they sprayed that in the ear, let it stay there 10 minutes, both ears, <laughs> and everything was still out of whack because they needed something deeper. Water for one, but we're going to get into some of those things. This is some of the things that I liked about this article. is some new things you can do that I learned about consuming alcohol. Cold, creamy hands or bluish skin due to hypothermia. Just don't have enough water in the system. Vomiting repeatedly and or uncontrollably. Okay. Some of the things to counteract that is some uh, apple cider vinegar in some water. Okay. Maybe like well, one part of apple cider vinegar and two or three parts of water. I can't control that vomiting. Because it puts the acid back into your uh, stomach. But why even go there? Okay. Irregular or slow breathing. Less than eight breaths per minute or more, uh, more than 10 seconds between breaths. These are just signs. Okay. Seizures. Yes, alcohol poison causes seizures because it messes with your brain. Confusion. Unconsciousness, splendor, conscious but unresponsive, and sometimes it can put you in a coma. I see why I call it poison. It's some serious stuff. If you notice any of these symptoms mentioned above, seek immediate medical attention. You, you want to get you some um, magnesium. Okay, I'm going to get you some of those vitamin C's. Alcohol poisoning risk factors. Generally, women are more vulnerable to alcohol poisoning and feel the effects of alcohol faster than men of the same size. They are also more predisposed to suffer from long-term alcohol induced damage to the body. This is due to s several physiological reasons such as one, poor ability to dilute alcohol due to lower body water percentage. The average female only has 52% water in her body while average male has 61%. If you drink the water on a regular basis, especially the water we have from, from HealthWise, it helps to hydrate your body quicker. We've had folks that were drunk 
and drink this water we have at HealthWise and got sober quickly because it hydrated your body so much. See, it's another reason why, see, your body is 75% water. Most women is 52%, most men is 61% because they're not consuming enough water. How much water is enough? You take your body weight, divide it by two, they get a number of ounces that your body needs per day. So a 200-pound person would require 100 ounces per day. And when it's hot like this, you might want to consider adding another one or two cups, another eight to 16 more ounces. Now, poor ability to metabolize alcohol because they have less dehydrogenized, okay? A liver uh, enzymes designed to break down alcohol in the body. Women have less than that than men. But you can get some of that, okay? That particular enzymes that's in your liver to help break down alcohol. The thing is not to wear that uh, enzyme out in your liver. Premenopause hormone changes tend to make women get intoxicated more rapidly during the days before their period. Birth control pills and other estrogen-containing medications, on the other hand, slow down the extraction, excretion of alcohol from the body. Does that mean that men are completely safe from the dangers of alcohol poisoning? Below are a number of other factors that affect your body's response to alcohol, regardless if you're male or female. Food. The peak blood alcohol concentration level can be three times higher in people who drink with an empty stomach than those who have a decent meal before drinking. Three times. So always eat before you drink. And we, like I say, grew up telling us to drink you know, some french fries or some potatoes because they uh, help you absorb the alcohol. Then we l learned about the tomatoes, okay, like in the, you know, like craving pizzas or, or foods that's got tomatoes in it. But it's not like eating the, like I say, just the raw tomatoes. You know, like I say, Bloody Mary's had them made with tomatoes and salary. Food plays a significant role in alcohol absorption in the body because it dilutes the alcohol while slowing down the emptying of, of, emptying of the stomach into the small intestines where alcohol is absorbed. It is absorbed in your intestines. Now, your intestines, your small intestines, that's your guts. That's your 80% of your immune system. It's right there in your guts. So, taking friendly bacteria every morning or sometime during the day help builds up that friendly bacteria in your gut where alcohol tears it down. So that's when you're dealing with occasional drinking, taking that friendly bacteria every day and then having you one or two drinks, you know, once a week or once a, uh, every other week or something like that. If you just got to drink the alcohol, these are just things you can do to help protect yourself. The Asian ethnicity. Approximately 50% of Asians have trouble metabolizing alcohol due, uh, due to a missing liver enzyme needed to process the substance. Yes, it's Asians can't handle alcohol. 50% of them, they say. Excess health conditions. Existing health conditions. 
people with diabetes should be weary of drinking alcohol because it can cause a sudden surge or a dangerous drop in their blood sugar levels. Drinking alcohol may also prevent diabetes prescription drugs from working properly. Diabetics, it's a hen hen clue clue, shouldn't drink no alcohol. Most of them know that. Prescription drugs, your medication can potentially, potentially dull the effects of alcohol, which in turn cause you to drink more than what your body can handle. So never drink alcohol and you take in prescription drugs. It said at least give it two, three, or four hours difference. If you just got to take some drinks. How much water you drink, how often you drink alcohol, your age and your family history are potential risk factors as well. How much water you drink. See, that's what's available to us. Water, water, water. Because alcohol dries your body up. And you're going to drink the water to hydrate your body. So you can keep control of your functions. If you're going to drive a car, you won't hurt nobody else, including yourself. Blood alcohol content. How much is too much? <clears throat> Excuse me. Blood alcohol content also called blood alcohol concentration, refers to the amount of alcohol in your bloodstream. It is expressed as the weight of ethyl measured in grams in every 100 milliliters of blood or 210 liters of breath. The blood alcohol content can be measured through either a breathalyzer blood tests, or urine tests. I've heard stories where folks drink too much alcohol the night before. Luckily, God washed them and got them home safely. Then they got up in the morning, had them a cup of coffee, and went to work and got stopped, got pulled over by the police. For whatever reason, the police did a breathalyzer test on them, and he failed the test because he still had too much alcohol in his system. So sleeping it off and drinking that coffee did not do the trick. So he suffered, you know, what they call the DUI, driving under the influence. The ticket can possibly take your driving privileges away. And he hadn't had a drink in 12 hours. For here's go an example. The the BAC of point, no, 0 0.1 means that 0.1% is one-tenth of 1% 1 of your blood by volume is alcohol. One-tenth of 1%. 1 All states except for Utah have set zero uh, uh, point. 0.8% of BAC as a legal limit for driving under an influence. <laughs> so that's less than 10%. It's like 8%. <laughs> less than 8% as a legal limit for driving under the influence. As commercial drivers, truck drivers, the BAC of 0.04% can result in DUI, driving under the influence conviction nationwide. The truck drivers can definitely not even touch alcohol because you talking about 0. 4%? <laughs> you can't even smell it at that's such a low rate. 
for those under the age of 24, there is zero tolerance level. Any amount of alcohol is ground for a DUI arrest. See, when they get you in DUI driving under an influence, they put you in jail and pound your car. <laughs> and that's what costs you $150 get out of the pound, plus the number of days was 15, 20 bucks or something like that. And every day did your car is impounded. All that for <laughs> a good time. These are some of the things that people don't even consider when they're drinking alcohol. To calculate your current blood alcohol content, there are free online sites and apps that you can try. And this is some of the things you can check out now. If you're going to drink, you're going to have this app downloaded on your phone. BloodAlcoholCalculator.org Let me say that again. BloodAlcoholCalculator.org That's one of the apps you might want to try to download just to protect yourself. Number two, I Drink Smarter. That's another app. I Drink Smarter. The BAC results may vary depending on very and several variables, which includes your gender, your personal alcohol tolerance, your body weight, and body fat percentages. These are all factors that determine the BAC. How much alcohol is in your drink? As far as the 2015 to 2020 U.S. standard dietary guidelines for Americans is concerned, moderate drinking is having no more than one drink per day for a woman and no more than two drinks per day for men. A standard drink containing point six ounces of pure alcohol which is usually found in 12 ounces of beer is 5 percent alcohol 8 ounces of malt liquor which is 7 percent alcohol 5 ounces of wine which is 12 percent alcohol 1.5 ounces of 80 proof distilled spirits or liquor or uh, a gin, or rum, or vodka, and whiskey, which is usually 40% alcohol. Various brands and types of alcohol beverages come with different alcohol content levels. To get an idea of how much alcohol your favorite drinks contain, check out the chart below. The types of drink. Low alcohol beer, a lager. A liger or a cider. Okay, they usually have yes, say on there. It's usually uh, here they saying two percent. The average alcohol percentage by volume is two percent. The types of drinks: regular beer, lager, or a cider, because it got a lot of new drinks out with uh, pop in it. <laughs> Root beer. The alcohol actually have uh, alcohol in the root beer. The average alcohol percentage by volume is four to six percent. Now, they have these frozen drinks. The alcohol pops. And you buy them and you take them to the park, and because it's so hot, it dissolves right away. And you suck on it like you do a popsicle. <laughs> they call that uh, alcohol pop. Its average percentage is 5% alcohol. The type of drink, a super strength beer, like the Guinness or the dark beers or the ciders. They usually have alcohol percentage of 9%. Okay, the type of drink like wine and champagne, 
it has an alcohol percentage of 10 to 14 percent. Fortified wine like sherry and port have a 17.5 to 20 percent alcohol content. And then you got your gin, your rum, your vodka, whiskey, 38 to 40 percent alcohol percentage by volume. And your shots of tequila, <laughs> again, 38 to 40 percent average alcohol percentage by volume. As a rule of thumb, darker liquors usually have higher alcohol content, whereas sweeter liquors have less. Hence, darker and bitter beers have higher alcohol content. The same holds true for red wines compared to white wines and sweet wines, except for Chardonnay. Meanwhile, all clear liquors have 40% alcohol content except for grain alcohol. So you got to know what the alcohol content is. That's why we just saying one drink for women and two drinks for men. And eat some food. And drink plenty of water. Possible complication of alcohol poisoning. If left untreated, a person suffering from alcohol poison can, one, choke on their own vomit and possibly die. Be severely dehydrated, not drinking enough water, which can cause seizures and permanent brain damage and even death from not drinking enough water. Have slow... Uh, irritable breathing which can eventually stop breathing from drinking poison called alcohol have irregular irregular heartbeats which can eventually stop now somebody sent me a technique that if you feel you're having a heart attack cough forcefully cough because when you forcefully cough, you causing your heart to beat. And keep on coughing and breathing and coughing and breathing until you can get to a hospital or get some medical assistance. If you caught by yourself having a heart attack. Coughing pumps the heart. There's only one pump. But each cough. De developing hypoglycemia. Developing hypoglycemia, extremely low blood sugar, which can lead to seizures. Not drinking enough water. Water, water, water. Long term effects of alcohol in women. Because a woman's body has less tolerance for alcohol compared to men. Is more susceptible to damage and the effect of alcohol poisoning. Numerous studies have linked these health consequences to excess drinking in women, which can include disruptive menstrual cycles, increased risk of infertility, miscarriage, stillbirth, and premature deliveries. Higher risk of liver cirrhosis and other alcohol-related liver diseases compared to, to men. Memory loss and brain shrinkage. Increased risk of mouth, throat, esophagus, liver, colon, breast cancer. You're going to do this. Alcohol, you put yourself at risk with those things. So taking the iodine on a regular basis. Because, see, cancer can't grow in your breast or the uterus when there's a high amount of iodine. And the breast tissue holds the highest amount of iodine in your woman's body. And the uterus holds the second highest amount of iodine. So taking three drops of detoxidine a day helps protect you against cancer. Right now. 
and getting an ultrasound which leaves no radiation in your body. That's why they recommend uh, ultrasound to check out a pregnant woman's breast because the mammogram could kill the baby. So how are they going to say it's safe? Because it leaves deposits of radiation in your body. The iodine help pull those deposits out. But why even success, make yourself accessible to that? That's $45,000. Or some people say $42,000 to do the mammogram. Ultrasound, $8,000. Alcohol is also a common risk factor in many cases of sexual assault. When folks get high, they get drunk, they lose their mind. When the woman is high and drunk, she's vulnerable. The guy's high, he's stronger, he want to take advantage of her. So you set yourself up for an assault, particularly among young women. About 1 in 20 college Women are sexually assaulted each year, 1 in 20. And research suggests there is a higher likelihood of rape or sexual assault when both the victim and the attacker are under the influence of alcohol before the incidents. Don't, do's and don't for someone that's sus suspected with alcohol poison. These are points I wanted to get to. Alcohol poison is not something that will pass and go away the following day. If you believe that someone you know should be suffering from alcohol poisoning, an alcoholic, here are some tip, things you can you sh here are some things you sh should and should not do to keep them safe while waiting for help. Make sure they remain conscious. Don't tell them to sleep it off. The blood alcohol content can continue to rise even when they're not drinking. Do keep them warm. Don't give them coffee. Coffee will further dehydrate the poison, the person. That's what that guy got stopped by the police. Well, he got stopped by the police for whatever reason. And he drank the coffee, thought it was cool. But the coffee further dehydrated him. So that's why he failed the, the uh, breathalyzer. And they confiscated his car, put him in jail, fined him, ticketed him. <laughs> the next day, do monitor their symptoms. Don't instruct them to walk around. This may only cause falls and bumps on the head which may result in serious injury given the brain an unfit condition. Do give them water, water, water to help keep them from hydration, especially the water we have from HealthWise because they're low uh, surface tension. It's not for six molecules per cluster. So the hydration rate, the, uh, the absorption rate is extremely high. We have seen folks who was drunk and started drinking this water and was surprisingly how conscious they became in a matter of minutes. Don't ask them to take a cold shower. Since alcohol already lowers the body's temperature, taking a cold shower could make the person feel colder than they already feel, potentially cause Hypothermia. It just body is just too cold. Do stay with them and never leave them alone. And do ensure they lie on their side so they don't choke on their own vomit. And now prevent their vomiting. Or maybe. <laughs> not vomiting as often. Some people say vomit is good because you get the alcohol out of your stomach. Taking the apple cider vinegar, they can say one part to ap apple cider vinegar, vinegar to two or three parts of water. Just another antidote. Lastly, 
Don't wait for all the symptoms of the alcohol poison to manifest. And don't hesitate to call emergency medical for help. Remember, the BAC levels can rise rapidly and time is of the essence in the situation. Being a minute too late could mean irreversible damages or even death. How to prevent alcohol poisoning. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know how you can <clears throat> keep yourself or your friends from suffering from alcohol poisoning. The first and probably the most important step you can take is to practice self-control. Avoid and discourage your friends from participating in any alcohol drinking challenges, which is a sure fire way to get alcohol poisoning. However, if you really must have a few drinks, I personally recommend taking any of these natural protocols beforehand to pre-tox your body. NAC. Now, I don't have this at the store, but I'm ordering it today so we can have it tomorrow for the weekend. Take NAC before you drink alcohol may help lessen alcohol's effects. NAC helps increase uh, glutamine. Glutamine. Okay. Helps include, in, increase the glutathione levels and reduce um, the, the, the toxicity, which may cause hangover symptoms. That's NAC. B1. B1 depress, uh, alcohol depletes B vitamins from your body which may help eliminate alcohol from the body. NAC is thought to work even better than combined with B1, okay? So B1, because alcohol depletes the body of all the B vitamins. So just take all the B vitamins. We have that um, B12, but we also have the B complex. Milk thistle. So we, we carry that milk thistle and the teas and then the pills. Cont okay. It's, it's rich in antioxidants that help to protect the liver from toxins, including the effects of alcohol. Not only has uh, milk thistle been found to help increase uh, nutrients, but it also helps regulate and regenerate liver cells. So milk thistle. I'm looking at when he said antioxidants, of course, I'm thinking about silver water. It's a super antioxidant. Vitamin C. May Alcohol may deplete your body of vitamin C, which is important for reducing alcohol-induced oxidative stress in your liver. Make sure you're getting adequate amounts of vitamin C, either through the supplements or through organic fruits and vegetables before taking any alcohol beverages and magnesium this is another nutrient depleted by alcohol and it's one that many people are already deficient in magnesium has anti-inflammatory properties that may help reduce hangover symptoms if you don't eat a lot of magnesium rich food taking magnesium supplement before even involving drinking may be helpful these pre-tox measures are imperative for supplying your body with vitamins, antioxidants, and other nutrients that will help protect your liver and assist in the breakdown and removal of alcohol from the systems. Other practical measures will help in include staying hydrated, drinking water, eat before you drink, and replenish your electrolytes. Stick with clear alcohol. Stop once you feel buzzed. In addition, also advise against drinking when you're feeling down or worse, depressed, as this may can lead to unconsciousness and uncontrolled alcohol consumption. Note that alcohol can actually alter your brain chemistry and lower the levels of serotonin, uh, melatonin, serotonin. 
a mood regulating chemical in your brain, increasing your anxiety and stress instead of reducing it. Rather than fall into the vicious cycle of alcohol abuse, I recommend addressing your emotional health as soon as possible. And you can try tapping. Now, if you want to know about tapping, just give me a call to 600-8532. 313-600-8532. And we can share where you can get more information about tapping and dealing with stress. Because some people get depressed and stress, and they go drink some alcohol. When tapping is uh, give you the relief that you're looking for, rather than the a- alcohol. So hopefully that comes in right on time because it's summertime. People having a good time with the alcohol. So hopefully you can continue to have a good time, make it through the summer, make it through the fall, make it through the winter, make it through the spring, and be back here next year. In all the years that you decide to be here. <sighs> Remember, five hugs a day is healing. And drink your water, water, water. Peace and love, y'all.